Um, my other one broke, so. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, five, 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 four, three, two, two, one. Yes, hello everybody. Oh my God, after a massive long pause, we finally, and almost didn't get it today, we finally <laughs> got together and we're able to do the latest edition of the finally crazy double j's weathering podcast um <laughs> with me and life me just gets so busy yeah oh, man, it, it just... does it does but you know what um we're here now yeah that's all that matters so yeah so here we are crazy double j's weathering podcast with myself james powell and that guy over there jason jensen jason jensen <laughs> hey Jason Jensen, Dude, before before I forget, I want to bring this up. Yesterday, yesterday, which was uh, we are in the end, so this would be May, but we're in April right now. Uh, yesterday, I met a guy who I've known for uh, quite yes. a while on online. His name is Wayman Humphrey, yes, and he has pro scale yep. models, and man, that guy is awesome. Oh, Wayman. Cool. Awesome, dude. Great, great modeler, great tattooist, great artist in general. Yeah. Um, yep. And uh, I was in Atlanta. Uh, we, I had him come over to uh, uh, Trillith Studios, which used to be Pinewood Studios, and now it's Trillith. It's where they make all the Marvel movies. Um, Sweet. I was there for work, and uh, I had him come over, and I got to meet him. And we didn't get a, we didn't get a pal around very long. But I drove him around the, the lot so he could see kind of cool. some of the stuff that was going on there. And uh, next time I go out there, I'll be able to actually maybe go see his layout and spend times. But shout out to Wayman. Wayman, man, you kick butt. And yeah, uh, love he's you, awesome. Yeah, he's a really good dude. So uh, cool. Next next on the uh, checkoff list is going to Jason Jensen's house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll do a live podcast at Jason Jensen's house. Mm -hmm. Um on the uh on the jason jensen layout so you know it, it's so hard uh i'm an hour away from the airport yeah i was there i was just, at yeah i was in i was one hour away from jason's house today one hour <laughs> but i was yeah. only there for about 45 minutes so you know I, I, even if i wanted to drive there i couldn't have and jason would have had to have a ticket and blah 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 so that is just it's too too hard yeah. but we'll yep. make it happen it'll it'll yeah, happen definitely so, yep yep um uh, mm, ah, Starbucks. I got my uh my multiple drinks as usual here. So um you know and my garage door open. Sweet. Yeah. And I, I, I my drink. Yes, monster. Yeah. <laughs> I've I've stopped drinking. I stopped drinking any like uh, soda stuff. So I, I yeah. Just, I just drink my Perry A. I'm all fancy now. <laughs> Perry A or my uh <laughs> Uh, oh, what is that other one called? The the other sparkling. There's my Perrier, and then the uh, I can't even remember what, what's that Italian one called. There's one from Italy, Pellegrino. Pellegrino. See, like here's the thing with this new camera. I got this new camera. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to figure out this whole autofocus thing with it because it's if you put like maybe I'll move my mic away a little bit. So if you put this, you kind of got to use a manual focus because. It wants to focus on everything and then uh but it's it's nice because your background is completely blurred yeah it's like the like the portrait mode right so yeah, the background. yeah. It's, it's really sharp um yeah, i've been writing an article and taking pictures with it and it it's great i mean fantastic cool. quality is amazing um it's really made for video uh, nice but yeah this thing it's a lumix gh6 and it's brand new they just came out and uh man i, really, I am really happy with it i am loving your diorama oh incredible man. thank you oh that's what's, what is that diorama you're talking about jason <laughs> the swamp the scooby-doo swamp Sco scooby-doo <laughs> swamp yeah it's um so i'm building a it's part of the dirt spot layout right Yep. And it is going to be part of the swamp area. So we got the Bergen cool. Island and we have the Burl Swamp. And this is uh, going to be the, the Burl Swamp. And I'm making it, I'm describing most of the pieces I'm making on it. 
um, because I'm uh, writing an article for the new magazine. It's called Weathered Rail. Uh, it's uh-huh. going to be it's going to be published by the guys that publish um, uh, Railroad Mall Craftsman and uh, the Narrow Gauge and Short Line Gazette. Sweet. Um, Rail Fan and Railroad, the company White White River Productions. So I'm writing mm-hmm. an article um, about this. It's ending up being a book, so it might have to be a multi part article. But um, <laughs> So I'm making a swamp scene and I'm really, I'm stoked about it. I'm having a lot of fun cool. doing it. It's, it's not like, um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not used to not doing buildings, you know? And of course yeah. there's all shacks in here, but just like the, you know, making the little cattails and the weeds. And of course uh-huh. I'm, I'm using the X tool D one laser cutter. Sweet. So yeah. So <laughs> get your laser going, Jason yet. No, like, ah, man, you got it. It's amazing how much stuff I you know. do with the laser. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just blown away by like, you know, I, every little darn little thing I'm doing with it. I mean, I just yeah. go in, I go into SketchUp really quick into SketchUp Make, which is free. I think, is it? I'm, I got the free one, I think. And I, I draw and it's on, it's a web base sketchup so it's a little wonky for me i've been using the i used to use the other one in this one but uh-huh. i go in there and draw what i want and i export it as a dxf file um you can also use like uh, adobe illustrator or corel draw okay. right? yeah and yeah. um so i do my measurements um i'll take calipers and i'll measure you know real life real life uh items right uh-huh. so i can so i can make things match up and then i put it into sketchup and then I export it as a DXF and then run it on, run it on the laser. And I use like task board or chipboard, or I've been laser, laser cutting, just like the Astro Brights paper, you know, the, like, uh-huh. the, like the 24 pound pound uh, bond paper. Yeah. And, and it just, they have like bright, bright greens. So I've yep. been laser cutting those and making like, weed. but what I've been doing, it's really, really kind of neat. I've just been going on and saying, like, I, I go to Google and I type up uh, like, cattail silhouette or lily uh-huh. pad silhouette right and there's always something you can grab and all you got to do is find a jpeg and even if you can't like you and, and this i'm talking about windows but even if you can't like right click on it and save it uh-huh. you just use you use the uh, it's like control windows key i think s and it brings up a little clip uh program and you okay. can just draw a box around the screen on what you want to clip and then save that as a JPEG. And what you do is you cool. The software that, that uses, uh, that, that I use for the laser cutter is called Lightburn. Uh-huh. And it's pretty popular and it's free or no, wait, I'm sorry. It's $60, but okay. it's, it's got, it's got a lot. I mean, it's very robust software. Yeah. You import your picture, your black and white picture. It's a silhouette, right? In into that program, and you just click on a button that says trace and it outlines your, your <laughs> wow. silhouette, right? And then yeah. you scale it to whatever size you want, you know, bring it down to whatever, like a lily pad, let's say a lily pad, it's gonna be one foot in HO scale across, right? And diameter, yeah. a little, little one. And you scale it to that and you just cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste, and then, then group those and cut and paste and you just keep making more and more and more. And, and you just Jeez. run it out to laser and cut it. That's cool. And it's great. I mean, that's awesome. So you're not even having to draw anything really. No, I mean, yeah, I did. I have drawn like I, I did some like a brick building. Right. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and that we could talk about in a little bit, but I, I drew the windows, right. Uh-huh. But all I had to do was measure the size I wanted and draw that. And, and I drawing everything in layers. Right. Yeah. So maybe the mullions are one layer and then, uh-huh part of the window frame is another layer and then another there's another layer to make the window deeper and you're just imagining just like kits you know everything's in yeah. layers yep. and then i'm just that stuff i'm all just taking and uh cutting out of chipboard you know the really thin cardboard you can buy it yeah, at yep. Lobby. Yep. and and what i did is I, I really lightly glue it together with like whoa what the heck was did that you hear that yeah I think my neighbor my neighbor is uh starting their vehicle and it's right here by my door so. <laughs> oh, wow. but it was really loud in here yeah. it was really loud um so i just layer those things up with with uh, yellow glue 
But then after that, I take and, and put a little bit of CA on it and it soaks up into the, into the chipboard and almost turns okay. it, you know, dries and turns it into like a plastic almost. Yeah. So you have like, like cardboard titchy windows, but they look yeah. great. They look really, really, really good. Cool. And, I mean, if you get really creative, you can make, I mean, I'm, ta I'm talking, you can make these cuts down to, and remember your laser that you have, Jason, you can do all kinds of stuff with, right? Yeah, yeah, that thing's yeah. made to cut a lot of stuff. Yeah. The laser I'm talking about, it's like $700. It, that's expensive for a lot of people, but at the same time, it's also, it saves so much time. I mean, yeah, it, but so I'm cutting fractions of a millimeter thick. Um, as uh -huh. far as like widths and it works perfectly it's it's amazing so and cool. I, I i ordered the the there's a little like what they call a honeycomb uh that you lay your stuff yeah. on to cut right which you yep. have on yours yep um because i was cutting directly on the plywood that i had it setting on it just burns the plywood and it, stays, yeah. it works but <laughs> yeah. and then it yeah. makes the surface all crazy so uh it's a steel honeycomb and you lay your material on top of that Yep. And then it comes with some magnets, so you can use your magnets to hold your material down. Um, but uh, I got a air assist, which, of course, on any real laser yeah. like you yep. have, yep. it's part of it, right? These don't uh -huh. have it, but I got one of those that will, uh, get, it, it'll help keep from the, the surface having burn marks, right? Sure. Um, if you're burning something really, or cutting something really thick or cutting really slow, you'll get kind of burn marks on the surface. For the mm -hmm. most part, you don't really care because we're going to paint the surfaces anyway yeah um i haven't hooked it up yet but i will um cool man i'll tell you it's like it is like a breath of fresh air i don't have to sit there <laughs> with the exact <laughs> cut out signs yeah you know to cut out stencils for signs uh, go yep. on find your font <laughs> trace your font da, 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 or go right into lightburn choose your font type out what you want to write make it big small whatever choose your material cut done Sign is done. Your letters are perfect. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so it's like it's like having a it's like having fuzz scale models in your house. Yeah, right. right. It's having Doug exactly. Fiscali right there with you. I mean, it's yeah. just it's really neat. And and then um and I'm sorry to run on. I mean, I'm just so excited about oh, this. Oh no, that's cool. Yeah. That, like, I'm so excited to get mine up uh -oh. and running. It's I've, just between my day job and you know, my son graduates the end of this month. Yeah, so right, right. That's gonna free up some time. I'm trying to get in focus. Have I been there out of focus go. that whole time? No, no, no. You gotta no, tell no. me if I'm out of no. focus because I'm yeah, looking at just, the camera, not at the monitor. It's just so. when you grabbed your coffee just now. Oh, oh okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, I, it, it, yeah, it, you, you're, you got so many things going on, but I think what you're gonna find out is once you hook it up. You're uh -huh. going to save, I know you, you pretty much build kits, but you're going to save so much time on cutting things. Oh like, yeah. Whatever stencil especially, you want. Especially when it comes to the sci-fi modeling, mm. man, you are going to oh. kill it with that thing. Oh. Any shape, any, <laughs> you know, cause sci-fi, you know, you have all these pa panel lines on everything. Everything's yeah. a lot yep. of geometrical panel lines. Uh huh. All you gotta do is draw it and cut it yep. out and it's perfect every time. Yeah. Layer upon layer. I mean, the it, it I I cannot I honestly in all the years I've been building models, I've never I've had access to laser cutters, right? And then we got 3D printers, but I've never had one right there with me when I'm yeah. building. Uh -huh. And it is the most like indispensable tool I have bought hands down without a doubt seven hundred dollars it's not i mean you couldn't spend better money for models. yeah that's any, cool any kind of models you could i mean anything you could think you could do like almost like origami i guess you uh -huh. could say sure because you could cut cardboard and you could score too you're you you use a laser to you, you could basically score and put score marks and then you can fold things yep um and like i was saying earlier we took and went online and looked up brick texture mm -hmm. and found just an image of some nice kind of even bricks 
but the this they had a lot of shadow on the faces of the bricks because the bricks were a little bit older and so you know how bricks when they start rotting they get like little pits in the front yeah right yep. and like little you know there's slash marks and whatever from machinery hitting them and whatnot and you could bring that right into the light burn software that in, i mean just literally import the image right into light burn yeah. or i went into photoshop and turned turned it into black and white but you don't have to do that uh, and you could play around with your settings and i started etching brick walls and it's actually 3D <laughs> oh, wow. etching the wall. So not only it's not just cutting the grout lines, it's cutting the faces of the brick. So where I basically have it set. So where the image is darkest, it's taking out more and uh -huh. where it's light, it's leaving the brick. Right. So you're, and what are you cutting it in? Um, what we, material? Uh, I am using taskboard. It is one sixteenth inch taskboard. Okay. And taskboard is anybody that's built any craftsman kit that are recent knows that stuff's amazing. It's like wood with no grain and, you know, it's strong. You can actually wet it and bend it and it'll keep its shape. You can yeah. make curves and things with it. Um, so I'm actually able to 3d etch taskboard and turn it into what amounts to 3D bricks with detail. And I, I did cool. I did a couple and I went and painted them kind of an orange color. And then I I uh, I went in and chain varied my oranges on my bricks and put a picture of that up and it looked pretty good. And somebody said they had a, you know, everybody always has there's always gotta be somebody with a smart aleck comment, right? Oh sure. It's like, oh that. <laughs> Yeah, brick grout would never be dark. Well, it looked really good, even though the brick dark grout was dark. Well, I'm like, yeah, it does because it molds. You get yeah. black mold and, and brick grout that's been wet. But I said, okay, that's cool. So then I just simply, I sealed it with, uh, it probably would have worked better if I was sealed it with like a uh, rattle can of crystal clear by like uh -huh. pylon. But yeah. I just put dull coat on it, right? To seal the paint. Yeah. And then you I could probably even clear it with uh, Mod Podge, right? Oh, of course you can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it might even work better if you do a gloss on it. Oh, uh huh. Let that dry. Maybe do a couple layers of gloss. And then I just took drywall mud, just good sure. old dap drywall, uh, vinyl spackle, and rubbed it on the surface and yep. let it dry a little bit. And then I got my finger wet and I rubbed off that dry stuff off the surface of the bricks. Let that, I did that a couple of times, took a sponge, uh -huh. wipe it off a little bit, right? And all of a sudden you have grout, just like you do on a, a plastic kit, you know, Yeah. but you have that, it's not flat brick. It's got the undulation in it. Uh -huh. um, and it's not hydrocal either. Where hydrocal, you can do the same thing, but now you're putting plaster on plaster, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. And then once that's done, you just spray it with dull coat again, paint it. It's it's amazing. I mean, <laughs> cool. I, I, I did, I made some wow. rivet. I made 3D rivet strips where I actually uh -huh. was able to etch 3d rivets based on the color i drew those in photoshop and man and that's just the tip of the iceberg what you can do with this thing I mean, yeah um very cool i made a trestle i made a this this swamp trestle with the yeah. laser cutter and i mean i blasted that thing out i drew it up really quick um made made flex uh wood tie strips uh -huh. you know just like just like the company sell i just copied what they do and Drew a drew a tie and then put a put a little connector and then went over here and put a connector and just did that and cut out a big long strip and put it on the trestle. Done. I mean, just oh, wow. It's 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 I, I, you are not going to believe how cool it is to yeah. have to have that. I mean, it's it's pretty mind blowing and it's fast. It's not like oh I got to sit there and you just get on the computer and it's quick. The drawings are quick unless you're really going to start doing a lot of detail. Uh huh. Um, but if you just want like cut walls with window holes and whatnot, so fast. I mean, you can't, you can't, you seriously can't ask for a better tool. I like it better than the resin 3d printers. Hmm. Doesn't stink. Right. Yeah. I mean, and a 3d printer takes forever. Right. <laughs> I mean, you can right. do for, you can do anything with them. Right. But they take forever. Laser cutter. Nah, 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 nah. Done. There's your part. Now you're almost done with the diorama, right? Mm. Yeah. So I added, 
So first I made some cypress trees and there's a guy on YouTube named Boomer. Um, yeah. I don't know his last name and he is really good. He's a, he's he used to be a, an effects artist, I think for the film industry, I believe. Huh. Okay. Um, so he, he, uh, I used a technique where he was using, um, uh, golden fiber gel paste. So I think that's what it's called. Let me see. I got it. Ooh, I just so happened to have it right here. Golden <laughs> fiber yeah, paste yeah. right there. All right. Look. That stuff is like a, uh, like a, I guess you would say it's like a thick, like a thick Mod Podge, right? Yeah. Like a flat, it's very flat but it's filled with these little fibers. So you can paint it literally with a brush and it's water-based. You can brush it onto like balsa tree trunks mm. and you get that fibrous nature of the bark. And it's made oh. specifically to accept paints, right? It's to, oh, cool. like, uh, you could prep canvas with it, uh, uh -huh. and do a painting or whatnot. So it's like a gesso almost. Yeah, okay. And so it accepts paint. So I'm, I'm painting it with like pan pastels and alcohol or uh, ammo, um, ammo pigments and alcohol, uh, and, and just it just grabs it, just I mean it just locks right on to the to the uh, gel paste, and it looks fantastic. So I'm really I'm really happy cool. with that. So I, I I made some trees. I came up with a, a little bit of a new technique where I I once again I went and looked up tree branch silhouette. <laughs> yeah got a bunch of them yeah. out on the on the laser cutter and then i thought man these things are flat right so you, you're not gonna have a flat branch how can you give it some dimension so i went and found puffy paint there's also what they call uh 3d paint but it's puffy paint that the the they use for fabrics right like drawing on t-shirts oh yeah, yeah. Like that uh -huh. craft. sure so what's cool is that stuff it comes out really thick and the tube has like almost like a little needle valve on it uh -huh. um, I take my little CA glue needle valves that I bought from Amazon uh -huh. um, and and I put it on the top of that and then I squished that out and I took and basically squirted out that little puffy paint onto each branch right and huh. it, it just sets there and what I did was I take those and I put them in the toaster oven for like 10 minutes at 250 <laughs> degrees and it, it solidifies that so it's like a, a rubber right yeah you can actually take and if you have steam like a steam iron you can go over it with steam and that puffy paint will actually puff and it'll give it more of a branch texture Jeez. now the thing is it's really it's really shiny right when it's done yeah. but what it it does not look like it would do this at all but if you mix it with you put a pan pastel and alcohol on it it also just like the gel the fiber gel it accepts the pan pastel like that. Wow. I mean, it's shiny, but it accepts it. it's really weird. Huh. So I made a ton of these branches and they were pretty much all the same size and all the same shape. And they're super quick because you just draw on them. It's like literally like you're drawing on with a marker mm -hmm. with the stuff. And, and once you dry one side, you do the other side and dry that. And then I made a big stack of them, colored them. And I started, I, I put glued little uh, floral wires to the ends uh, of the branch. And I use those as the armature to stab them into the balsa trunk, right? So I had this balsa trunk with all these same size branches. I went back and I, I just took the scissors and nipped off the end. So I got kind of the shape of the trunk and then I painted it. And, and oh, wow. Yeah, and, and, and I did a static grass technique to, to put needles on the branches, uh -huh. uh, which I actually have on my YouTube channel. Um, and and then I was like, well, I need to, I want to make this really swampy. You know, it looks like a cypress tree. So I just took cotton and sprayed it like a sage green uh -huh. and pulled it out and glued it onto the branches. So it looks like Spanish moss or oh, old yeah. man's beard moss. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they look really, really cool. <laughs> oh, I, man. Yeah. So, so I did those and I did, obviously did like a, a, a low boy trestle that goes above the water. Um I did. What else did I do on that diorama? I've done. And you've been documenting. The yeah, whole well, right. I'm writing it, writing an article on it, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm taking. I, I have probably a thousand pictures of this process. You know, just too, way too many. Like I said, you could write a book on this stupid little diorama, right? Um. So 
I did, I cut up lily pads. Ooh, there's a hummingbird. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Ooh, squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> um, but there was, um, so I, I made lily pads and I did my water method and, and put lily pads in the water. Um, I made mangrove trees and documented how I made mangrove trees out of floral Jeez. wire, a floral wire, wow. baking soda, and um, Mod Podge. And yeah. I use a baking soda basically on the trunks and bake it and uh, then seal that and, and turn turn it into these, you know, the how the mangroves have the have the, the roots. They're all. Yeah. You know, yep. The idea is that the, the burl swamp is like a, it's like a coastal swamp, right? It's a mangrove swamp and they're a little bit inland. But to get that kind of feel, I wanted some mangroves at the end of the uh, hmm. at the end of the edge of the swamp. So. Um, so yeah, I a lot of different techniques I've been putting in this. And then I had some little shack kits from Brian Bolger of Bolger, uh, yeah, Edgley, best. Uh, yeah, scale trains from best models. And uh, I made a couple of those, but instead of making them like you're supposed to make them, yeah. I made them look like old rundown, of course, me, old rundown yeah. swamp <laughs> shacks. Sure. Right? So um, I made one that looks like a, it's like floating on a bunch of piles, like a, uh -huh. like, kind of like a, like a barge. I made the other one on uh, little piers and I had some other scratch built shacks that I put yeah. in there. Um, yeah, it's been a really fun piece. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I could say cattails um, for the cattails. I use that little puffy paint to make the little, the little brown, uh, I guess, tail parts and yeah. probably a little big over scale, but it looks cool, you know? Nice. So, nice. Yeah. So, um, and now, what's the overall measurement of of the diorama? Twenty four inches by twenty four inches. It's not big at all. Okay. Uh, I'm not. I'm not completely done with it. Um, I want to do. I I, I kind of have the swamp, and then it kind of goes up to a hill in the back, and I have a shack back on the hill, a couple of shacks. But I want to do like a really thick undergrowth, like you'd see in a swamp. You know. Yeah. Um, I want to do a lot of that. So I'm. I've been laser cutting leaves, like literally like <laughs> scale leaves. Um, wow. Yeah, I think there's, it cuts like 4,000 leaves at a time. So I just collect them and put them in a little bucket and I just keep Man, you're leaves really, and leaves. Whoa, whoa. You, I you're really out, out of focus. focus. <laughs> oh my God, what happened? Here we go. I'm going to try to bring it back to me. Okay. Bring it back, magic. Here we go. Can we do it? Ooh, here we go. Ooh, almost. Look. There you go. Ah, look yeah. at that. Nope. Right there. I'm looking that way because I'm looking at yeah. the monitor to see where I'm at. That is weird. It's not focusing on No. Me. Maybe it's because I put like my bottle over here. Let's try. There Bear with go. it. Bear with us, guys. We'll get it figured out. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good uh, now. Okay. So yeah. So yeah, that's uh pretty. I mean, it's, it's pretty neat that, that, the having and that, they, and that fits into your layout. That is part of the layout. Yes. Yeah. So your layout, is it 24 inches deep? No, it's, Consistently, uh, it's, about, or? it's about 30 inches deep. Um, oh, okay. It's 24 in some spots, but uh, so it's going to have a little bit more uh, background behind this. Okay. Um, uh, so. I also I'm I'm gonna add a little. I don't want to say what I'm gonna add right now, but it's gonna be really freaking cool. Um, in the, <laughs> in the foreground, it's good. Yeah. I, I want to add some uh, more weathery weathered stuff. If I, uh, I don't, okay. I want to <laughs> okay. show that there used to be other tracks in the scene uh, at one okay. time. Yeah, so um, I'm pretty excited about that. So that's kind of the next thing I got to fill in the back of the the forest. Um, and that I, I, I'm going to come up with some kind of funky technique to make foliage that's deep woods. That's not, I'm going to try to do something that, that you haven't seen, you know, typical, okay. yeah, typical yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah. So we'll see, but I, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I bought some, um, I don't know if anybody recently has been trying to find super trees, um, you know, from like Scenic Express, or I think that's probably about the only place you can get them in the U.S. Uh -huh. uh, but I, uh, they don't have them in stock, right? Mm. All they have are, I think, some of the starter kits. And okay. so I found some on Etsy 
that were very similar hmm. and I didn't pay attention to where they came from. So I just bought them. And then I found out I ordered something from Italy. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they, they're, they look, let me see if I could find some, I have some right here and I know I'm out of focus. Uh, let me see. If are I they similar, very similar to the super tree? They are. Oh yeah. They're, they're, see that right there yeah yep. they're uh they are similar to the super tree they're a little bit skinnier but yeah. you can break you can break them apart and kind of add on uh, uh -huh. but the actual branch structure is really really similar so okay. they're nice and fine they have kind of that natural branch structure yeah. um they they're a lot nicer than like a caspia or something like that sure so they, they still look pretty good not quite as good as super trees but a pretty yeah. good replacement so okay. yeah hopefully they'll come back in uh he'll have those back in stock soon and we can use those yeah. but um yeah i'm man i'm having so much fun making this uh <laughs> cool making this diorama it's it's awesome um it's i i bought a little i bought a little locomotive right uh -huh. um i bought an h-o-n 30 where's it at oh it's too far away to reach um uh -huh off of Shapeways. It's like a, a, a single cab, center cab diesel locomotive. Okay. Just, of course it's Shapeways, so it's just a shell. Yeah. Hmm. But it fit on a Cato N scale locomotive chassis. And okay. well, it's Cato. Let me tell you, trying to find those damn things, not easy. You can buy them mm. from Japan um yeah. or england uh, i ordered i ordered one it came from japan and uh, it fits into the locomotive really well one thing i didn't make an assumption about though and it wasn't cheap it was like 50 or 60 dollars uh my assumption was it was kato and you know at least back in the day kato has always been like a really high quality brand of locomotive right uh -huh. so they always ran perfectly this thing's a little a little sketchy yeah huh. yeah it's almost like i should have went out and just bought a you know like a some kind of sd or some kind of you know de modern diesel engine and just took the shell off of it yeah it, the, the motor in it is really wimpy i mean it's kind of huh. i mean and i got a pretty steep grade going up yeah. Bergen island so yeah. we'll see but even if it doesn't work perfectly uh i can't wait to dress up the locomotive and put a little train behind it yeah, just to take cool. pictures because uh i do i do want to get a, a good operating locomotive but I, that's going to be really fun to make this like kind of yeah like, awesome almost abandoned locomotive that right. they've, had to, they've had to jerry rig to to get to work you know um i think it's gonna well be and if it doesn't work you can always just buy an end scale little switcher or a little yeah. diesel and, exactly exactly yeah. and if, if it doesn't work i'll just rusted up of course i mean yeah right of course right so <laughs> anyway um cool. so that, that's what i've been working on is this diorama it's like i say it's for an article so i've been really pushing on it but um it's it's i'm having a lot of fun i'm having that's a lot, cool I, I'm spending a lot more time on it than what i spend yeah. on most of my stuff obviously uh -huh. um i kind of slam through most of my stuff um this one i'm taking my time and kind of trying to use techniques that I haven't necessarily seen before. So. Yeah. Now, do you think that some of that is due to photographing it? Like, do you photograph it, then look at the pictures and like, oh gosh, I, I need to work on this or I could change this, uh, make it better. I don't, not really in photographs. Um, I just kind of stand back all the time. Okay. And look at it. You know how you kind of, you, on yeah. your layout, you kind of move your buildings around and look at it and see if they, they feel right. Yep. They yep. look right. I am doing that a lot with this. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when I first did it, I put buildings back behind the trestle and I didn't like it. It just killed me to do that. But I wanted to give some depth. Right. Yeah. I wanted to say yep. that, you know, there's there's stuff beyond this trestle. The railroad wasn't the end. Right. Yeah. Um, and so then I put some stuff in some a couple of things in front of it. And I put a little boat in the other day. And and. Uh, yeah, we'll see what I come up with. I'm pretty much done with it. I have another Good. article I have to write here pretty soon. Um, it's actually due in a couple of weeks, but I don't have the supplies <laughs> to do it yet. So, um, but I should have them soon. 
once I get those out of the way, I have a couple ideas for some other things I want to do that. Well, there I go again. See? Uh, yeah. That bottle. Move that bottle over. Oh, that bottle. It's the bottle. Yeah. Always the bottle. I know. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, there we go. All right. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. For the people <laughs> that are listening to this, they're going, what the hell is going on? That's crazy. Um, yeah, we. I was out of focus. So uh, I think that um, I kind of, I want to do something in a bigger scale. Yeah. And I also have this, I sent you pictures. There's a, there's a depot right down the road from me. It was, they moved it. Um, oh yeah. You did show me pictures. It was yeah. on the, it was what was called the San Joaquin Valley railroad. Um, and it went through the, uh, the Clovis, um, there was a, uh, a lumber mill, one of the lumber mills around here that had the flumes that came out of the Sierras. You know, there were big four major flumes that came out of the Sierras and, um, one of them was 64 miles long. Can you imagine that? It was a water flume, a lumber flume of 64 miles long. <laughs> oh, anyway, wow. right down the road here, one of them ended in a town called Clovis, California. <sighs> and that railroad, um, not quite at its terminus, but uh, there was a little depot. It was called the Tarpy Village Depot. And it is the cutest damn little thing. And they, they, they rebuild it and they put it in town, in the, in the town center of Clovis. And... I kind of want to make one of those, maybe an O scale uh, yeah. with a laser cutter. Um, I kind of want to make a kit of it, but I really don't want to get in the kit business. Um, but I've never seen <laughs> right. a kit of it, and it's really, it totally looks Disney. I showed you a picture of it. Yeah, yeah. And it, it looks it, very totally. Disney, you yeah, know? It totally looks Disney. It's yep. got like a turret on the one side of it. And it, this yeah. thing is, it can't be bigger than like 20 foot by 20 foot or 30 foot by, it's little. Uh -huh. It is a little deep, yeah. but it is super cute. And yeah. uh, I think it'd be kind of fun to make that just as yeah. like a change, change of pace kind of thing. I think it'd be uh -huh. really So maybe, maybe I'll do that next. After yeah. I get done with the next article. Look at me. I got my ball of Perrier. I look like I'm on. <laughs> from, from, well, from the wrong side of George Selios's track standing beside a, <laughs> a, a burning barrel. <laughs> Well, I love, you know, I model in the 118th scale. Right. And right. Uh, man, that that is such a nice break. And then when it you is. go back to HO, yeah. you're just totally revived and yeah. it it goes so much quicker. Yeah. It just goes so fast after working in that large scale. Those large scales, man, they take a while. They do. And, yep. and and look out. If you got like little bottles of paint, like little ammo paints, man, it'll blow through those in no time. Oh, you yeah. You need to use craft paints on yep. the big stuff. And it's know? so funny, you know, because I'll be working on HO scale for a uh -huh. while. And then uh -huh. I switch to 118 scale. And I'm thinking that, oh, this project will be quick, weak, no problem. I'm like, no. no. I always forget. Uh, <laughs> it takes so long. Yeah, but, you know, you, you just made, let's see, you made... Um, I did the, the cone shack. The cone shack, yeah. three billion years into the future. Yeah, yeah. Um, three billion. You know that. You know, life hasn't been around three billion. Years. <laughs> right. Let alone humans. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's it's so much fun building. Cool. You know, an it's HO scale cool. structure and then recreating it in one eighteen scale. And yeah, yeah. And you did so, you did red red hook. Yep. Um, really really cool i mean it's, thanks it's uh the and that that the red hook was that that was like just that was foam packaging wasn't it yeah it was yep it but it lends itself perfectly to sci-fi yeah right it does. because yeah because you have that like mechanical kind of structure where they use uh -huh. the ribs and and it, it's perfect for sci-fi modeling yeah um, and it really you know i'm so influenced by galaxy's edge yeah. at disneyland who is it? Um, yeah. So <laughs> laser yeah. cutter, laser cutter, laser oh, cutter. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Yeah, that I you could do so much with that. You get that yep. thing going. When are you when are you gonna get it going? I think like in a couple months. Oh uh, Here weeks. I am. oh no, Ooh, you're out of focus. Weeks. There we go. There you go. No, I would say I would say weeks, yeah. Yeah, in weeks. Yeah, I would say in a couple of weeks. When are you gonna so. make your first kit? Hmm. Oh man, there's a lot of pressure now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
How yeah. are you running out of time on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I think the whole whole world's waiting and wants to know what your first right. kit's going to be. Yeah. Um, I can't wait for that either. That's going to be pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Um, I've been. Have you put, have you really put any thought into that about what you're uh, going to do as far as like. I have been doing or... so many sketches, so oh, many have? drawings. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have so many ideas um, of kits that I want to do. Okay. Um, it's just scheduling that time. And like I said, my son is going to be graduating from high school. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Um, I, I can't wait. Uh, is there any hints at all as, <laughs> as to what I'm trying to, trying to pull it out? Any, any hints as to like what the theme no, is going soon, to be? No, soon, <laughs> soon, okay, I promise. All right, all right, I, promise. All right, all right. <laughs> I know everybody's waiting with bated breath. What is Jason going to make? And Jason is going to make. And I really, I swear, I think I have more ideas for the sci-fi stuff than I do H.O. Skills well, you know, I, I really think the sci-fi stuff's going to be a big deal. I yeah. think it's going to be really, really, really fun. Um, H.O., I mean, think about it. H.O., there's hundreds. Even just with Craftsman kits, there's hundreds of them out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and with laser cutters, it's generally wood, right? Yep, so yep. Wood structures, and uh, um, you know, there, there's there's an unlimited amount of shapes of buildings, uh, but there's also it's pretty easy to make similar looking buildings. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and if I know anything about you, it's going to be unique. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to see that. Mm -hmm. Jason is going to come up with a. He's just going to make outhouses. That's it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> super outhouses. unique there's gonna be outhouses yeah all different styles yeah just whatever just just <laughs> clabbered there's gonna be queen anne style victorian <laughs> gingerbread all over them mm. yeah <laughs> that's cool that's cool though um how about your ho layout what uh, you know it's you funny i uh i actually made some time to work on that today oh you and... did what I did today, well, well here, while you were waiting on me downloading the podcast <laughs> software. <laughs> well, when you originally uh, sent me a text about doing the podcast, uh -huh. um, I was covered in foam. I was cutting white, <laughs> white foam, so I had oh, all those God. little white dots. All over story me. of my life. Story yeah. of my life. So yeah. then I just had to hook up the shop vac and vacuum myself yeah. and the floor and everything around me and. But I've been doing a lot of carving for uh -huh. this new area, and are, are you doing are you doing scenery? Is that why you're carving, or uh, it's uh, like on the other side? I did um, the uh, concrete pier. Right, right, yeah, okay, right, okay. So the opposite side of the layout, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing another concrete pier okay. and a road that goes down and concrete retaining wall okay so it's not really scenery but it is scenic kind of yeah yeah, yeah. You, you're you're making layers and, and yeah and yeah like yep. uh urban scenery yeah. i guess you could say but so it's nice to carve the white foam mm -hmm. because it's it's pretty cheap i mean all foam is getting pretty expensive but <laughs> you don't need to tell me yeah we had we used to buy a four by four by eight foot block of two pound density. So that uh -huh. means every cubic foot weighs two pounds of foam. Uh, that's what we make our sculptures out of. That used to cost us, and this was relatively recently, um, pre-COVID, pre they were about $350 a block, right? It now costs about $1,500 a block. So almost a five times. Wow. And it's, yeah. there's so many, you know, supply chain, resin yep. prices. They were still going back to, you know, a year and a half ago, the storms in Texas destroyed a bunch of plants, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's so, yeah. Um, and that's one thing people should think about is before you throw away your like packaging, container packaging. <laughs> yeah. It, because it's not, I, I'm surprised that Woodland Scenics hasn't jacked up their prices on their scenery. Yep. Um, their foam stuff because it's expensive yeah so uh, so i'm making the basic shape first okay. out of that white foam and uh -huh. then i take the pink foam it's like pink or blue either yeah. one you know Sty like styrofoam or dow dow foam or yeah. yeah um 
I cut that really thin on my hot wire cutter. And then I, I sort of, I cover the white foam with the, the thin stuff. So you're, you, you're putting a, a foam that your, your white foam is really just your kind of your infill. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you're using your, uh, God, I can't think of the name, the actual technical term for that foam yeah. um, that you're using but the pink or the blue foam and they also they make some green stuff too it's all yeah. similar yeah. Um, you're cutting that and you're using that as your shell that you can either carve or yes. cut expansion yep. joints into or whatnot yeah yep. yeah um, so that that's that's actually a really good idea that's, yeah. a, that's a good way to yeah that that's a great idea actually yep. and that's that's really fun i know you've talked about it before but carving that that uh, pink foam blue foam um, yeah the right tools like what what type of tool you i know you use a pencil sometimes right even to score yeah to carve into. cracks in it and stuff mm -hmm. but uh yeah i you know i bought that hot wire proxon cutter which you which love is, right yeah oh my gosh i love that thing <laughs> yeah yeah so just don't yeah. sniff the fumes make that's sure right your, make sure your room is really well ventilated yeah. when you use one of those because it's um you don't want to be breathing that in. I mean, that's yep. something that's really important that when you're, when you're using hot wire cutters, uh, you don't want to be breathing in the styrenes and, and the, the, the only papers. downside to that thing is that the arm that goes over it, uh-huh. Limits your, it limits how tall yes. you can cut. But you know that, that all that's so, doing is it's, it's running a little circuit. So you can expand that. Yep. That's all you got. It's actually pretty cool. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm getting texts. They're they're saying oh, no. Wayman Humphrey <laughs> no. just texted me from Whoa, Wayman from Oh, ah, really? Yeah. Oh my so, god. Yeah, he's like That's cool. That's <laughs> tell tell Jay I said hi. So <laughs> <laughs> So um but, but yeah, I would like to to extend that arm so should. that I could you can you totally can. Taller. Yeah. Cuz all yeah. it's it's got what a thumb screw to move it up and down, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you could, I, and it's probably aluminum. So I think you can um, just make another one. I, I don't yeah. see. Uh, but um, those things are, for model makers, are also kind of indispensable. They're super, oh, super handy. Yep. Really yep. handy. Um, yeah. I never, I've never bought one only because, honestly, it was too expensive. <laughs> it, it's one of those things. I'm like, oh, well, I got all this hot wire stuff at work. Why would I want to, you know, why would I want to? Uh, by what I would consider an expensive one, and they're not that expensive, but I know I, I, yeah, they say bought a laser cutter, but you know, it, it does, especially when you're doing your large scale stuff. I mean, uh, you're using it for HO, but you can cover so much ground so fast. Oh, yeah. I mean, with the um, even with the sci fi stuff, uh, yeah. I can first cut that packaging foam right down with a saw, right. So right. that it makes it a little smaller, smaller and thinner, and then I can run it through that well, hot. That's wire the cutter. thing is because it's it's all styrene based. You can cut the white packaging foam, which is that's called EPS, expanded yep. polystyrene. Yep. You can cut that uh, with that hot wire, but you can also cut the colored foams with it. Yeah. Um, yep. One thing you don't want to try is there's also uh, what they call urethane foams, um, mm -hmm. and you do not cut those with a hot wire. They'll burn and they cause gas that has cyanide in it so you don't want to cut those with the hot wire um but that's it's used a lot in uh, entertainment in is industry also to shape yeah. things it's got it's a lot heavier it's got finer detail uh -huh. um but it almost is like a sand when you, you yep. sand it and it's itchy it's not itchy like fiberglass it's not going to get in your skin but yeah. it's just more annoying you know you gotta yep. wash it off but yeah what you create what you create personally um with that colored foam is pretty awesome it's i mean it's just the sculpting you do on that stuff's amazing foam for me has been a huge game changer because you know years ago we would create a sort of a shell mm -hmm. with maybe some wood yep and then cover it with chicken wire yep maybe put um i don't know plaster cloth over it sure right? sure i mean now you can do that you can make a whole hill or mountain all out of foam uh, yep. out of foam and then I, when you go to plant your trees you just stick it right into the foam and it sticks. it stays yeah when i did my first let's see my first i guess major layout i was like late elementary school 
early junior high and we were using the hard shell method, right? Yeah. Which yeah. I think Lynn Westcott came up with, if I remember right, or maybe it was, it could have been Dave Freire. Um, uh -huh. But it, it was basically crumpled up newspaper and yeah. then you dip brown paper towels into plaster uh -huh. and hope your plaster doesn't dry. And then you lay those paper towels over top of the, the newspaper. Yeah. Um, and then there was also, um, uh, and, and that would work. Uh, but there was also ones where you would take and basically weave cardboard into like a, 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 a net or like uh -huh. a, almost like a basket weave. And you yeah. would lay stuff over top of that. And foam is just, it's just so much faster. And oh, you don't is. even have to, you don't, unless you're doing like rocks and things like that, you can, you can paint over it. I, I did a method the other day that I was just experimenting with. I didn't totally like the way it came out with, but it worked where I mixed just dirt, right? I went outside, grabbed some dirt. I baked it, of course, because that's what you do. Um, <laughs> because it, dry, it dries it out. So it, really, it, it makes it, it, it makes it really fine, right? So uh, I baked it, want to kill all the bugs because you don't want, you know, bugs cruising in your layout. Um, so I baked it and mm. then I actually mixed it with flat Mod Podge, right? And made uh -huh. a paste just oh, okay. to see what what it would do and i wiped it directly on top of foam yeah and then i took dry dirt and sprinkled it on top of that and lo and behold hard shell scenery super cheap super fast wow. you can do it with elmer's glue too yeah. right but yep. all you got to do is sprinkle it on there that glue will soak up into the dry dirt on top if it gets a little too wet put a little bit more dirt yeah. boom done and it's on top of foam, you're fine. You could still plant trees right into it. You know, as long as you put cool. a wire or a bamboo skewer, toothpick, whatever, boom, plant right into it. Perfect. You don't like it? Take out the little drywall saw. Cut, 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 cut. <laughs> yep. Cut it right out. So way, well, way less, way less messy than plaster. Yeah. And yep. it provides a really solid base. Yeah. You know, hard shell. Once you take the newspapers out and stuff, you cut it and you got this big hole, yeah. which is great for like tunnels and stuff like that. But with foam, you can you can totally cut, especially with a hot wire, you can cut tunnels through. You can make that. That's one thing about hard shell tunnels is there's no interior. You have a hard shell mountain and there's no interior to your mountain. If you mm -hmm. do that with foam, all of a sudden you have an interior with your mountain. You can do cribbing, you can do rock work on the inside, yeah. whatever you yep. want. So now it does admittedly the areas that you can't see inside a tunnel you don't want to scenic those you want to leave those open so you can get to anything that you might need to get to in case you have a derailment yeah. or yeah. something clean your track or whatnot yeah but um yeah there's a lot of advantages advantages to foam it's light yeah you put a lot of plaster on your layout all of a sudden you got to make sure that you built some some solid bench work yeah it's great foam. for a diorama oh my god that that little diorama <laughs> that i did of the the uh swamp that weighs nothing yeah uh, there could be disadvantages to that like when you go outside during the day and you set it out and you're taking pictures and all of a sudden the wind starts blowing <laughs> yes um, i i'm not speaking through experience of course <laughs> I am speaking through experience. Yeah. You got to be careful with that because yep. inevitably it could be dead still outside and I'll go out with the camera or the phone to take a picture yeah. and wouldn't you know, gust of wind for no reason whatsoever other than yep. it knows I'm taking pictures of my building or whatever. Or yeah. Whatever. But um, so you have built up, going back to what we were talking about, uh, you built up kind of like a, a landform but uh, a more of a structural landform. And then you put the thin foam on top of that. Yeah. And then, wait, you're painting, wait, you're painting it with acrylic paints and whatnot. Yep. Um, uh, and are you doing anything on the surface of that foam or are you just painting it directly? I'm just painting directly on the foam. Yeah. Um, it already, it has a, just a really great texture, I think for like HO scale concrete. It does. It yeah. does. It's almost like just almost microscopically porous. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Once it's cut with the hot wire from the factory, it's not, but once it's cut, cut with the hot wire, it's got just enough where it takes paint. Yep. 
and it's just got little pores. So when you cut in those little cracks and whatnot, yeah. it just looks perfect. Yeah. Um, you, do you use any, I do this on my concrete pretty much all the time. I use uh, concrete pigment from uh, ammo. Like I'll take oh, paint uh -huh. and I'll yeah. mix in the concrete pigment and then I'll put it, um, maybe like alcohol and pigment over top of it mm. to give it that dry, that really dry yeah. look. Yeah. You ever do that at all? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it definitely helps out. That's yeah. one thing. Oh, that... Those pigments, <laughs> I just can't say enough good things about the ammo pigments. My God. Well, if you want something just... dead flat, they're yeah. amazing. Yep. I mean, and there's so much in modeling that, you know, people kind of leave a little sheen on that may not have real sheen. And like, you know, like yeah. I'm, I'm modeling what's supposed to be kind of a tropical area. So really everything should have a little bit of like almost yep. damp to it. Yeah. But if you want stuff that looks like dry wood or, um, you know, like uh, dry concrete pigments, man, they are dead flat. Yes, they are dead flat. You can mix them with yep. alcohol, paint them on yeah. something. Yep. Um, uh, you know, ammo has, cause I find mixer. with the, uh, with the shaders, uh, the shaders for whatever reason, uh huh, kind of gives it a semi gloss. It's when got you a that... little bit. Well, you yeah. know, they, they're really made for air airbrush, right? Yeah. So, yeah. If you use a brush with it, you're going to get, I don't want to say it's too thick because there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it, but it will have a little bit of a, yeah. a little bit of a gloss. So um, then what I do is I just brush over it with a pigment that is close to that color and yeah. man, it just f dulls it and flattens it. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been doing, this is something that I've been doing with wood to make it look old is I've been using a lot of the, the best of Atero stains, right? Uh -huh. I, just, I love those. They're so good. Yeah. Um, I know there's like, I don't want to say controversy, but there's a little bit of like, uh, is Hennerline better or is Vitero better or whatnot, right? Yeah. Um, but man, that Vitero stuff, I'll take that and I'll use that as kind of my um, carrier for a pigment or a pan pastel. Uh -huh. Like let's say aged barn wood. And then I brush that stuff um, onto wood with the pigment in it and let it dry. And the color that comes out is phenomenal. Yeah. I love the color. And you want to get a little bit damp look. Uh, I'll put a little bit of uh, swamp rot color, which got a little bit of green and brown uh -huh. or ivy green, which I use. Of course, I use on everything on the bottom of my buildings. Uh, all yeah, that. yeah. Um, but and it looks so so good i mean i that is a secret to honestly to making wood look old is that the vitero stains a little bit of pan pastels or ammo pigments it's man yep. i love it it looks so and if you take and go in and add some grain to the wood maybe chop up the ends of it a little bit even darken the ends of the wood with maybe a little bit of darker stain like a sepia indie ink wash uh -huh. or one of the dark Vitero stains, man, you, you can get some really, really cool effects. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, I can't, now there's a new Vitero stain out, right? And uh -huh. since we did the last podcast, this has came out. Yeah. Um, Brian created this stain called, it's called dried orange peel. Oh, I so have not seen that. It's brand new. Okay. I call it old number 61. And that's okay. really what it should be called is old number 61. <laughs> and why is that? Well, because he sent me a little sample of it when he was making it. And it said test sample 61. Okay. And <laughs> it is, he, he makes a light rust stain, uh -huh. but this stuff is really saturated with pigment and it is awesome for doing cool. like a new rust. Yeah. Right. So I told him, I said, orange peel, what? you should have called it something rusty. But he already had three rust colors. Um, but if, if you guys try that, it's a uh, uh, old number 61. No, it's actually called dried orange peel, but he should call it old number 61. Cool. But he already printed all the stickers, for it, <laughs> okay. but he couldn't call it. So I told him, I yeah. said, print another sticker that you can put on there. You know, and he's got those cool whiskey looking wine bottles. So Oh, they're um, awesome. Yeah, they're awesome. There one thing I don't like about them, right? Okay. I love everything about it. 
is that you have to be really careful if that bottle is close to your arm because there's <laughs> they're they're whiskey flasks right yeah and they can tip over really easily sure and i was like man i should draw up like a little 3d printable base that you can yep. put the, put it in just to keep it from tipping yeah um but uh, yeah he's he's definitely looking into that because you you can knock them over if you're not yeah. they look fantastic i suppose you could just take a piece of square piece of foam two yeah, inch foam oh, yeah cut a little cut out an oval and stick you, it in the center use the proxon yeah hot wire cutter cut <laughs> yep. oval out of it you know kidney bean shape and but uh it's so funny i am not accident prone i'm no. just not uh I, well it's good uh, yeah good when you're making models no yeah <laughs> but i i get that some people really are they well just, i knock on wood i haven't done it yet i know yeah. i'm going to i know i'm going to <laughs> um i have knocked over certain things like uh little cups of let's see a cup of acetone a couple of mineral spirits um glue uh, i use those little um the little medicine cups like the pepto bismol oh yeah, yeah. yeah you buy them at hobby lobby you get like 100 in a pack or 50 in a pack uh -huh. for, for a few bucks i use those all the time and um i have definitely they're light and if they don't have much liquid in them here we go again i'm not in focus if they don't have much liquid in them uh they will knock over pretty easily if you just mm. barely touch them so hang on, i'm gonna yeah. to focus myself again Ooh, it's the magic so i'm gonna figure out between this and the next podcast how i can keep this thing from not focusing on me i didn't put the bottle up this time which is crazy. is it autofocus or it's autofocus yeah no oh. if it was manual i would just have to stay in the same spot but yeah. it's set right now on autofocus it put a weird little focusing box up on the screen when i put it on manual so i don't know how to get rid of that and i already oh, okay played heck trying to figure out how to turn this into a webcam so <laughs> okay i wasn't going to work on that today so here we go there it is and there yeah Ta -da! look at that <laughs> oh, oh. <wow. laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so that's i mean that's kind of uh you know kind of what i got going on and um you got any any plans you're, you're just going to work on the ho stuff for a bit yeah yeah um definitely sticking with the ho scale for a little while until i get inspired to <laughs> something on the sci-fi i did you know i do have a, a future plan for the sci-fi underneath the red hook okay there's an elevator shaft that mm -hmm. like that takes you down below the surface okay from red, from red hook okay and um i just bought this it's sort of like a toy or a kit that um i'll be using all of the parts to build that elevator shaft oh cool that goes under it so cool. yeah where yep. do you buy your toys at because i mean there's no toys r us no um uh, online there's different toy shop even amazon amazon oh, okay. has so great... you're, you're buying them online you're not yeah necessarily yep. going into a store and no, no not a whole lot of places to go into a store no. and look for stuff no. that's a bummer i'm a i'm an amazon freak <laughs> I, I use it way too much, way too much. It's so easy to go. Oh, I need this. And yep. you up your phone and and then. Yep. And uh, I have Amazon Prime, so it's course. free shipping next day, and yep. boom. Yep. And and luckily, you know, the shipping's getting a lot faster again. You know, it slowed down for quite a uh, while. You know, you couldn't get stuff for a week for a while. Oh God, you couldn't get stuff for a week. I feel so. I don't know. I feel so. I don't know what the word is for it, but. Yeah. yeah i guess um overprivileged <laughs> with, with that <laughs> right right um but uh yeah it's sped back up so that's good uh, another thing that's hard to find right now too is static grass um oh. if you look on amazon it is uh it's there but it's not in large quantities there was a time even even during covid when you could find uh large amounts of static grass for not a lot of money I just received an email from Ammo that uh -huh. they're selling static grass. What? Did you see that? No. I, I haven't checked my email, check, but check your email. I would like to get some of that. And I bet there's, I want to say there's at least 
six, maybe six to eight shades. Really? They sell of static grass now. Really? Good. Brand good. new. So. Oh, great. That, that's really good. Is it ammo brand? No, uh, oh. their ammo is carrying this product. Oh, okay. It's one of their yeah. distrib- distribution products. Yeah. 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 So that's for those of you that don't know, ammo also distributes a massive amount of model supplies. I mean, massive. So <laughs> massive. many kits and scenery and yeah. it, they're like, kind of like horizon, but in Europe, I mean, they have everything. Um, that company has just gotten so huge. Oh, they're, Ammo they're is just giant. They're, they're listed as one of the fastest growing companies in Europe. I mean, they, man, and yeah. they deserve it, man. Yeah. Those are, those are yep. some good guys. The guys are running, they're good, good people. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, I um, I guess back on topic. I I can't wait to. Uh, I, I guess I'm getting the new U Rust set from Ammo coming in, which is the cool. actual rusting set. Yeah, um, where it's you, you have like iron iron powders and and bronze powders, and you use real chemicals basically to patina and rust them. It um, looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, and supposedly you have some coming too. So let's see if we'll either see. of us get them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I uh, I can't wait. I'm, I'm going to write an article about using that. Cool. Um, cool. Yeah, I can't say anything else about that one. I can't really talk about that one, but um, that's going to be fun. That's going to be yeah. a really fun project. I, I can't wait to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, well, let's, um, I guess, I guess you got anything else to talk about? No, not really. No, no, yeah. not really. I mean, this is not a super long podcast, but it's not real short either. Um, yeah. We touched on a few things, which is really cool. Um, I do want to say that Jason Jensen Trains on YouTube is getting a pretty good size following. So It is. Thank yeah. you. Thanks to everyone out there who watches the channel. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, so I mean, much fun because you know, as you know, and everyone else, this is my passion, yep, like you. Yep, yep. And so I just yep. love being able to share it now with others. Yeah, no, it's it's fun. I uh, I've gotten, I'm getting quite down I mean, there more, not a lot, but I think uh, Dirt Spot dot seven on Facebook's got, it's getting close to three thousand followers, so that's good, uh-huh. or, or likes, almost four thousand followers, so that's that's fun, and then. Uh, I still can't get any more <laughs> followers on Instagram. I don't know <laughs> why. I don't. I don't get it. Um, and uh, people send me things all the time. They're like, "Why do you only have a couple followers on?" I, I don't know. I put the same stuff on. They tag the same stuff, and I just can't do it. Um, but whatever, it's a challenge. It's kind of fun. Uh, yeah. So you got Jason Jensen trains on YouTube. Jason Jensen trains on Facebook. Jason Jensen trains on Instagram. Instagram, yep. Um, and uh, not Jason Jensen trains on TikTok. He doesn't do no, <laughs> no. With all the video no. you have, you should do TikToks because you got tons uh, no. of video. You got tons no. of video. Um, I uh, I have uh, Dirtspot seven on Facebook. I have James A Powell on Instagram james.a.powell on YouTube, which I've been getting more and more people watching my dumb little videos I have on YouTube. So that's cool. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're out there making model train and sci-fi fun weathering stuff. Yep. Uh, I want to thank you guys all for uh, watching us and um, tell your friends because we need more people to watch this podcast. That's um. right. <laughs> well, and sorry, we went a little while without doing. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah, totally. Sorry, it's it has been it's been a lot of uh, we got a lot of stuff going on, and Jason yeah. does. Like I said, I just got back from Atlanta today. We got all kinds of stuff going on at work, and um, but certainly fun, and can't wait to see you guys again soon. And thank you for listening. And uh, from James Powell and Jason Jensen. Goodbye, guys. We'll see you soon. Thanks, all. All right. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.